Can you hear me? I did my first degree in Oxford. In my final examination, I was asked about my future plans. I replied, if you give me a first class degree, I will go to Cambridge. If I only get a second, I will stay in Oxford. They gave me a first. I arrived in Cambridge as a graduate student in October 1962. I had applied to work with Fred Hoyle, the principal defender of the steady state theory of cosmology, an alternative to the Big Bang Theory. Hoyle was the most famous British astronomer of the time. I say astronomer because cosmology was at that time hardly recognized as a legitimate field, yet that was where I wanted to do my research, inspired by having been on a summer course with Hoyle's student, Jay and Nerlicker. However, Hoyle had enough students already, so to my great disappointment, I was assigned to Dennis Sharma, of whom I had not heard. But it was probably for the best. Hoyle was away a lot, seldom in the department, and I wouldn't have had much of his attention. Sharma, on the other hand, was usually around, and ready to talk. I didn't agree with many of his ideas, particularly on Mark's principle, but that stimulated me to develop my own picture. When I began research, the two areas that seemed exciting were cosmology and elementary particle physics. Elementary particle physics was the active, rapidly changing field that attracted most of the best minds, while cosmology and general relativity were stuck where they had been in the 1930s. Richard Feynman has given an amusing account of attending the Conference on General Relativity and Gravitation in Warsaw in 1962. In a letter to his wife, he said, I am not getting anything out of the meeting. I am learning nothing. Because there are no experiments, this field is not an active one, so few of the best men are doing work in it. The result is that there are hosts of dopes here, 126, and it is not good for my blood pressure. Remind me not to come to any more gravity conferences. Of course, I wasn't aware of all this when I began my research. But I felt that elementary particle physics at that time was too like botany. Quantum electrodynamics, the theory of light and electrons that governs chemistry and the structure of atoms, had been worked out completely in the 40s and 50s. Attention had now shifted to the weak and strong nuclear forces between particles in the nucleus of an atom but the field theory approach that worked so well for quantum electrodynamics didn't seem to work for these other forces. Indeed, the Cambridge School, in particular, held that there was no underlying field theory. Instead, everything would be determined by unitarity, that is, the idea that probabilities always sat to one, and certain characteristic patterns in the scattering of particles. With hindsight, it now seems amazing that it was thought this approach would work, but I remember the scoring that was poured on the first attempts at unified field theories of the weak nuclear forces. Yet it is these field theories that are remembered, and the analytic S matrix work is forgotten. I'm 
very glad I didn't start my research in elementary particle physics. None of my work from that period would have survived. Cosmology and gravitation, on the other hand, were neglected fields that were ripe for development at that time. Unlike in elementary particle physics, there was a well-defined theory, Albert Einstein's general theory of relativity, but it was